Welcome to another edition of the Van Deep Live. We are in the vehicular device once again this week. Joining me on this edition, we are with T.S. Agressa, my friend. Welcome to Vandy Blow. Well, hey, thanks for having me, Vandy. I got to tell you, I get such a kick out of the intro, and I, I've watched several of your uh, vlogs, and I uh, always have a good time watching, so I'm excited to be a guest this time. And I got to tell you, you've uh, shown a lot of personality. You know, you've had some guests, some really good guests on here that have ranged in their uh, level of entertainment value, and uh, you've always brought your A-game when, uh, whenever you get somebody on here that doesn't isn't excited to be here, so... Uh, I appreciate that. Possible. We appreciate you being on the vlog, and you're one of the guys that we try to get on this program. So we're going to start with this. First off, you've been wrestling for how long now? You know, I started training myself up in Minneapolis uh, back in the fall of 1996. So what that means is this year, 2016, when we get to about the October time frame, between August and October, I got started. Uh, that would be my 20 years of my involvement. Of course, I wasn't really active wrestling the whole time. My involvement is going on 20 years now. So, involved with professional wrestling for 20 years, what made you fall in love with professional wrestling? What made you say, hey, I want to do this? You know, like a lot of guys, uh, Vandy, you, you, know, you love it. You get, you get struck by it at an early age and just uh, really impressed by the, the superhero abilities of a lot of these performers out there. And just kind of admire him and want to be like him and hope that you can be like that guy someday. And uh, so I just, it's a feeling that I just never grew out of, you know. And a lot of guys, as we get become adults, uh, you grow out of, of some of those childhood passions. But uh, I like to say it, 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 uh, it evolved into an adult passion. Now, was there one guy that sticks out in your mind like, okay, you know what, he's the reason I want to you know, it's funny, you know, I had a lot of guys I loved watching, you know, at, at different times of my, my life, you know, I, going back to the great Muda and Junkyard Dog and, and uh, Shawn Michaels, both uh, as a tag team guy and, and singles. But uh, one guy I always liked, two guys I really loved were Brett the Hitman Hart and Mr. Perfect, Kurt Hennig. You know, I was a huge Mr. Perfect fan. So when I went to train in Minneapolis with uh, Brad Rangans at his camp there, uh, Kurt Hennig was the first guy I met there. He, he was the first guy to come out the door and greet me. And I about crapped my pants. I mean, it was such a, I was such a huge fan of his before I met him. And then I got to work with him a lot in that time frame, that fall of 96 to early 97. He was there every weekend for a long time. So Kurt Henning was a big influence on me before I started wrestling. And I became even a bigger fan, getting to know him just a little bit. I mean, he was such a, such a great role model from a work ethic standpoint. I mean, the guy, had been to the top and uh, was working his butt off to get back in there. He went to WCW uh, later on, but uh, he knew what it took with the hard work and sacrifice, and, and he was willing to take that take that journey again. And what a great role model he was from a work ethic standpoint. Now, through all these lessons, you know, those guys gave you. What's the one thing you think you learned the most from Brad or Kurt? Oh, I think it was a very disciplined school. It, it's a it's much different. Than the way we teach it, and I, I love the way we embrace the training element of it. But a lot has changed in 20 years too. They were still, even in the, the mid to late 90s, still pretty protective of the business. We didn't have visitors come in and, and talk to the guys. You didn't have travel partners ride with you to train. It was a very closed off, secretive thing. So there was a healthy amount of respect for the business, and, and part of that was that we did a lot of amateur wrestling for conditioning, and it was very rough. I mean. Uh, the the uh, process of learning professional wrestling can be so rough and physical. You know, you're spending so many hours uh, being rough and physical in, in a training environment. But then when you're done with that, after hours of that, you got on the amateur mat and you rolled around with guys that were way better than you. Brad Rangins, Kurt Hennig, Wayne Bloom. And uh, that was rough as well. Sometimes that can be rougher than the actual pro wrestling training. So, you know, I'll ask you this as well. As, is there anything you took from your training that you still use today for the Impact Pro Wrestling oh, training yeah. at the yeah, so there's so much of that. There's so much, and we had such great teachers and, and teaching from example and also the process in, in which, how we lay things out there. You know, at, at the vault, we like to start our students off and we mix things up, and, and, and part of that is due to our training uh, from Brad Rangans and Kurt Henning and Wayne Bloom, and part of it is experience, kind of teaching what things can we fill in that I wasn't good at starting off. How, how can we better prepare guys 
to have better matches faster. You know, because I, I tell you, I, I trained for four months every weekend, Saturday and Sunday, and I thought I was ready. And they did a fantastic, I mean, this is no slight on my trainers at all. I loved it. But uh, you get out in front of that crowd again, it's like starting over a little bit. Now you have to deal with nerves and, and anticipation, anxiety. Now you can try to ease your comfort level, but there's still a lot to deal with on that end of it. But uh, just things like comebacks, putting heat on, being comfortable controlling a match without bumping the guy too much, without running too hard, without getting in repeat mode with a lot of different things, being comfortable grabbing a hold, all of those things were things that were covered in our training. But I just, myself, I felt like I needed more time uh, really understanding how to put a comeback together, the speed and intensity at which that, that, that particular fragment of the match had to happen. You know, And it makes all the difference in the world when you when you're out there performing, you have to change gears. And it's, at times you have to build it and pick it up and then also slow it down, you know. So uh, th all those elements were there when we trained, but very specifically, just doing technique drills. We would always start off with, with the tie up and then work on an arm hold or work on a headlock or a leg takedown. But we would get into a, a line setup where one guy would be in the middle and everybody else would form a line and you'd work through it exactly like we do now 20 years later. That's exactly the type of training that I was brought into. That, that type of uh, atmosphere where one guy is out there and everybody else feeds in. You gotta go through the same things with each guy because everybody feels different, different sizes, shapes. Some guys are really rigid and rough and some guys are, are loose and can really work with them. But so, yeah, something, that's something we took from it. So getting done with the training, and, and actually really one thing I believe in firmly is that you're really never done training. But you, you get to a point where they say, hey, you're ready for a match. What's your first match like? Who do you face? Oh, man, it was so exciting to me because I was working in the ring with my good buddy, uh, Mr. Destiny, you know, Jay Hanna. And we're running some tackle drop downs and stuff. and just kind of working on some match fragments, really. And uh, I hear Wayne just gets out his, his phone, Wayne Bloom, and he calls Ken Patera. And I can hear him just saying, he goes, hey, Ken, when's your next show? I got a couple guys I'd like to get booked on. And he's talking about us, you know, and it was me and uh, Jay Hanna. Our first match was in Pepin, Wisconsin. February 9th of 1997 and uh, it was just incredible you know I mean I, I remember so much about not just the match but about that whole day about that whole weekend it was a Sunday afternoon I remember going up there we used to sleep on the wrestling mats at Brad's place and I can remember going up there working out all day Saturday just being so excited that uh, not just because it, it's that realization of a dream and that you you've worked hard to get somewhere and this is finally that that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow which I felt it was all those things but it was, it was amazing, getting to share a locker room with guys like uh, Nails, Patera, uh, Jumpin' Jim Brunzel, Baron Von Raschke was there. I mean, it was, he was looking around like, holy crap, Barry Darso, Wayne Bloom. You know, it was just amazing, an amazing first show experience for a guy like me, something I'll never forget, something I cherish. Well, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get into the next half of your career. We talked about your early beginnings. We'll get into the, kind of the middle part and then you're, you know, where you are now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do part two. We're gonna have a separate video. So this is part number one to our interview with the man, the myth, the legend, mm, T.S. Aggressive. You wanna hit the boom button? Boom. boom.